Okay. Oh. We will call this October 20th meeting of the Murraysville Council to order. Can I please have a roll call? Mr. Case? Mr. Stepanovich? Here. Dr. Lee Corns? Here. Mr. McKenna? Here. Ms. Brockway? Here. Mr. Dice? Here. Mr. Spadero? Here. Mayor Sinan? Here. All right, I ask that you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Okay, Mr. Morrison, do we have any unlisted amendments tonight? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. President, I would like uh, to take uh, item 11B off the agenda. Uh, there's meetings set up for Friday that will uh, play into uh, that discussion. Okay, 11B will not be discussed tonight. Uh, any other amendments? No, sir. All right, thank you. That brings us to our consent calendar items. Do we have any questions about the minutes, accounts payable, or investments and transfers? No. Okay. I'll just note that I'll be abstaining from any payments to KU Resources as I've done work from them in the past. So can I have a motion and a second, please? Motion to accept the consent calendar items. Second. Thank you, Carl and Tony. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Consent calendar items pass. Comments by the mayor. mayor? Thanks, Mr. Dice. Uh, do we have slides, Jim? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's do it that way. Okay, first of all, we have the Westmoreland Cleanways Hazardous Waste Collection Saturday, October 23rd. Uh, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. This is at the Westmoreland Cleanways Recycling Center in Unity Township. Make sure you look it up online is my advice to you because it's no longer right along Route 30 where it was easy before. It's a little more difficult to find. You can register by calling ECS and R at 866-815-0016 or visit their website at www.ecsr.net. The amount due will be determined on site depending on the weight of the material to be disposed. <clears throat> Murraysville Library. Local author will be library's featured speaker. Gemma Stemley will be featured speaker at the Murraysville Community Library's October 23rd program. Stemley is the author of Finding Home, a Sentimental Journey that Touches on Themes of Immigration, Home, and Belongings. It will take place at 2 p.m. at the library's new Technoc. Pre-registration is requested, but walk-ins are also welcome. For more information, call 724-327-1102 or register online at the Murraysville Library. Uh, trick or treat, <coughs> Halloween trick or treat in Murraysville will be held on Sunday, October 31st from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Please turn off your porch lights if you do not want to participate. Please drive safely and have fun. Is there one more, Jim? I thought there was one, but okay, uh, I'll it. just wing that's the last. That's what I have, Mayor. Sorry. Okay. Um, if you didn't all see it, it was in today's Penn Franklin, but Herb Yingling was uh, honored as a hometown hero on the KDKA annual uh, hero uh, show that they have, and uh, <coughs> it's quite an accomplishment for somebody who's given so much to this community. I, w I would ask that all of you at home and anybody who's ever touched her blending and drop them a note or give them a phone call or whatever congratulations for this hometown hero award because i think it is a big deal um, to those who uh, sent me thoughts and prayers for my back surgery three weeks ago i want to thank you all for that i'm, uh, I'm halfway to physical therapy the only bad part is you can only sit about 30 minutes, so I'm not going to make it through the meeting tonight. So I apologize when I get up and leave in advance. It's not because I'm angry at anyone or I want to, don't want to listen any longer. Thank you. That concludes my report. Good to have you back, Mayor. And Thanks, Dan. Big congratulations to Mr. Herb Yingling. That brings us to comments by the Chief Administrator. 
Mr. Morrison? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we received uh, notice today that uh, the Franklin Township Municipal Store Authority has received a double A bonding uh, rating from uh, Standard & Poor. Wonderful. So given that uh, we've backed most of their borrowings in the past, that uh, bodes well for the municipality also. Um, leaf collection is slated, the next leaf collection is slated for November 13th. Uh, we would ask that you either call Republic Services or here at the office to schedule to make sure that they know that you put leaves out, put them out the night before or before 6 a.m. because we get a lot of calls, people put them out late in the morning and the truck's already been by. Uh, and we also received a letter from the Westmoreland Heritage Trail Group thanking us for the use of the community center. They used it uh, for an event that they had. Uh, it raises funds for maintenance of the uh, trail. And finally, I have uh, a prepared statement here to read uh, into the record uh, that pertains to um, the proposed tax increases uh, to uh, fund the 2022 budget. So if you bear with me as I go through this. The municipality's major source of revenue are real estate taxes and earned income taxes. Real estate taxes are based on the assessed value of the home and property and the tax millage levied by the municipality. In Murraysville, the tax millage is 12.05 mills. The earned income tax is levied at 1% of wages and is shared 50% or 0.05% with the school district and 50% or 0.05% with the <coughs> municipality. According to the Census Bureau, the 2019 median housing value in the municipality of Murraysville is $250,400 and the median family income is $102,081. The tax values applied to the real estate tax rate and the earned income tax rate yields a median tax paid of $1,105.92 per year or approximately $92 a month to the municipality of Murraysville. In comparison to the monthly rate of taxes paid, the monthly rate of the average cable TV bill is $85 a month, the internet $60 a month, home security services $30 a month, gym membership $40 a month, and snow receivable snow removal services of $80 a visit. Even though the municipality continues to build new houses and attract new business to the community, the income generated by this growth has averaged less than 1% over the last five years. There are two main reasons for this. First, the common level ratio established by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, which sets the assessed value for new property coming onto the tax rolls, has declined by almost 25%. Second, the number of tax appeals filed by existing resident businesses are at an unprecedented level. These tax appeals and reduction of the common level ratio are tied to high, in, high real estate rates of the school district. The school district real estate tax represents over 80% of the real estate tax bill, the county approximately 12%, and the municipality approximately 8%. The earned income tax revenue year over year has remained relatively flat over the same period. This can be attributed to the increase in number of residents aging out of the workforce at higher incomes and being replaced by comparatively lower income earners early in their careers. According to the Census Bureau, 24% of the Murraysville population is 65 or older. Other factors impacting revenues are a decline in liquid fuels tax, which is a tax paid on the gasoline used to the Commonwealth and used by local governments to fund road improvements of 10% or approximately $85,000. This will continue to decline as electric vehicles become more prevalent. A 10% reduction in the cable franchise fee, which is a fee paid to local governments based on the number of subscribers to the cable service. This revenue will continue to decline as more cut homes cut the cord. And a 4% reduction in state aid, which supports municipal pension plans and fire services. Over 29% of the 21 budget was for capital expenditure funds to purchase police vehicles, road equipment, paved roads, replace bridges, and improve parks. All the capital purposes previously mentioned are on a replacement schedule and are life cycle costed. The table that was included in this document compares the prices of equipment that, was per that is scheduled to be purchased in 2022 as to what their original price was in 2011. Examples are a three-quarter ton pickup truck was $30,000 in 2011, it is now $44,000. A 10-ton dump truck with a plow and salt box is 100, was $135,000, it's now $220,000. Police vehicles, of which we have three scheduled for purchase in 2022, 
were $26,700 apiece in 2011. They're now $50,000. And the, over, the road overlay program in 2011 was 75000 It's proposed in the 2022 budget to be $1,630,000. The purchase of these four items represent an increase of over $526,000. In 2021, the municipality placed an order for a new fire service ladder truck, which to replace the one purchased in 2002 at a cost of $865,000. The new truck to be delivered in 2022 will cost $1,500,000. Over the past 11 years, general fund expenditures have increased at a rate of 1% to 2% per year. This has been accomplished with staff reductions and minimizing overhead expenses. However, it is projected the 2022 budget, expenses beyond the control of the municipality will increase significantly. These costs include fuel costs at 26%, commodities such as stone and pipe at 20%, and workers' compensation at 20%. Funding for programs for the library, the volunteer fire companies, and Medic One are budgeted in the Special Purposes Fund. This fund provides a significant portion of the library's operating budget, all the funds for the acquisition and maintenance of the fire equipment, and a contribution to the purchase of an ambulance. This fund will require a 34% increase of 289000 in 2022. This party every year develops an operating budget and a capital improvements program projecting revenues and expenses for the upcoming year. Incorporated in this budgeting process is a look back at the last four years of revenues and expenditures and projections of the revenues and expenditures for the succeeding four years. Based on this process, the staff has informed council new sources of revenue would be required to maintain the current levels of services beginning in 2022 and going forward. The amount of revenue needed has been exasperated by the pandemic, a marked increase in operating costs such as fuel utilities, maintenance parts and services, materials such as asphalt, pipe, and stone, which are required for the day-to-day -day operations of public work activities, and significant price increases in rolling stock, including police vehicles, dump trucks, and fire response equipment. To maintain the existing levels of the uh, services, the following alternatives are considered. You can increase the real estate millage and the real estate transfer tax. Based on the budget projections over the next five years, the municipality would need to increase the real estate transfer tax from its current rate of five-tenths of a percent to one percent. The real estate transfer tax is a tax on the transfer of title of real property. This is paid at the time of closing on the sale of real property. In addition, real estate tax millage would have to be increased by an estimated five mills in 2022 and an additional two mills in 2027. Based on the same budget projections stated above, the municipality would need to increase the earned income tax by two-tenths of one percent from the current level of five-tenths of one percent, which on the median household income in Marysville would equate to about $204 per year and increase the real estate transfer tax to one percent. The municipality currently has vacancies in the positions of Director of Engineering and Director of Community Development. Over the next two years, Two police officers will, or I'm sorry, over the next year, two police officers will retire and two public works employees are scheduled to retire. A reduction in the police force would jeopardize the safety of officers and create additional overtime. The many outreach programs and community-oriented policing services currently provided to the police department and the high ranking of being one of the safest, safest communities in Pennsylvania would be jeopardized. By not replacing public works pro personnel, many projects performed by the department in-house would have to be contracted out, increasing costs significantly. Snow removal routes would have to be adjusted, causing delay in response and efficiency. Both departments are currently working at optimum staffing levels. The municipality in the past has attempted to contract in engineering services with a limited amount of success. Given the municipality does a number of projects in-house through its public works department, and completes over $1.4 million in road improvements every year, having an engineer on staff has provided cost efficiencies. The duties of the Community Development Director are currently assumed by the Chief Administrator. The next Chief Administrator may not have the same skill set in community planning. In addition, the community size of Murray's well as the development that occurs and the pride it takes in good development while looking towards the future requires a full-time position. The municipality currently provides $330,000 to the uh, library's operating budget. This represents about 75% of their budget. A reduction in the municipal contribution would cause a reduction in services, a reduction in staff, 
and or operating hours. <coughs> These paid by the various sports teams to use the sports fields in the parks account for approximately 20% of the actual cost to maintain these fields. Fees would need to be considered to be increased. Significantly reduce the number of roads paid by the municipality on a year or over year basis could be another alternative. This the municipality maintains over 153 miles of roads. Historically, the municipality spends between 1.2 and 1.4 million dollars per year to repair and repave these roads. Roads are addressed typically on a 10 or 15 year basis depending on the type of original construction of the road. Once a road has reached its useful life, cost to repair them increase significantly. A reduction in the purchase of rolling stock for the police and public works department is another alternative. Typically, the municipality spends four to six hundred thousand dollars per year replacing police cars, dump trucks, pickup trucks, roadside mowers, and other similar pieces of equipment which are life cycled over a three, 10, or 15 year period, depending on the piece of equipment. Again, once a piece of equipment reaches its useful life, significant repair and expenses and a reduction in service due to downtime occur. Reduction in the maintenance, replacement, and repair of infrastructure, including bridge, storm stores, and park equipment may be another area to look. However, delays in maintenance and repair only increase costs. Murraysville's 37 square miles with 10 active parks 84 culverts and bridge, bridges and approximately 100 miles of storm sores and inlets. Final alternative pro uh, proposed would reduce the funds dedicated to the replacement and maintenance of emergency response equipment, including fire trucks and ambulances. The municipality owns and maintains 12 fire trucks with replacement values ranging from 400,000 to 1,500,000. Failure to replace and maintain this equipment jeopardizes the lives of volunteers and residents and will increase homeowners insurance policy premiums. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jim. Okay, that brings us to community input. This is everyone's chance to come to the microphone and say whatever they like so long as it is three minutes or less. <coughs> Start with Mr. Larry Schultz. If you could just state your name and address for the minutes. <coughs> Thank you. My name is Larry Schultz. Uh, I live at 1012 Summer Ridge Court, Murraysville. In general, uh, people who pay taxes don't like tax increases. Many retirees did not like building the new school. Many who pay earned income tax don't like the proposed two tenths of one percent increase. What we need is a good balance and a plan for the future. I've worked on various Murraysville committees with Jim Morrison and Diane Hemming for over 12 years. And I appreciate how incredibly blessed Murraysville has been based on their very sound spending and budgeting management. I've been quite surprised, quite frankly, that they've been able to balance the budget every year by maintaining the tax rates they have for so long. Especially uh, as we see many of our residents transitioning into retirement. I look at my own cul-de-sac. We have 11 homes on my cul-de-sac. We moved in 32 years ago. We now have 11 families where the primary bread breadwinner is retired. So over half of my cul-de-sac pays no, no or, or very little earned income tax. At this point, we have two choices. Uh, Jim mentioned um, some of the choices we might have to make. We could cut budgets for our absolutely outstanding police force. We could uh, cut services at our outstanding parks, our library, our community center, our roads. We could even cut the uh, traffic light sequencing on Route 22 and have a major traffic jam every day. Or we can raise taxes. A 0.2% increase in the earned income tax is deemed appropriate at this time and adequate. But we need to uh, have a plan to attract more working families. To facilitate this, I believe we need more age-appropriate housing in Murraysville so retirees can continue to pay real estate taxes while making their multi-level homes available for working families that can probably do a better job maintaining them than people like me. Murraysville has limited senior-appropriate housing currently, 
and we have friends who have left Murraysville, and they're now paying taxes uh, in 55 and over communities nearby in Penn Township and North Huntington, which I think have done a much more aggressive job in getting such housing. I've heard proposals that we should not increase the earned income tax, but should rather seek increased funding from D.C. and Harrisburg. 30 seconds, Mr. Schultz. Okay, but let me tell you that with budget disasters in those two cities, that kite won't fly. We need to increase the earned in income tax now to maintain our excellent municipal services while working to add age-appropriate housing and more employed residents to increase our overall tax base. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, that brings us to Mr. David Nader, and please just state your name and address for the minutes, please. I'm David Nader. I live at 3015 Lexington Court, up School Road South in Franklin Estates. Council, mayor, residents, I've been a resident of Murraysville for over 30 years now long enough to believe I grew up here. I'm here representing the literal thousands of workers of Murraysville. Dane, I'm here to humbly ask you to please reconsider a different approach to raising the funds needed to balance our budget shortfall, instead of by raising the earned income tax on all of the workers who already pay nearly 50% of their income to taxes. Mayor, I profess to you, and we're not quite sure how any of you can see it any other way, this is a municipality issue. This is not an income tax issue. This is a municipality issue. Tony, collecting money for your shortfall from just a select group of the community, instead of from the entire community, is not only discriminatory, but it also opens the door to a dangerous precedent. That precedent could easily turn th into this. Let's charge this group for this need, and, and that group for that other need, and then yet this third group for this other special need. It's just plain discriminatory, and it's wrong. Carl, you, our Murraysville Council, have not raised the municipal tax, the tax on the entire municipality, the entire community, for 14 years. 14 years? Why? Why not? Mac, by the way, nearly 300 of us so far find it quite the coincidence that you scheduled the meeting to vote to raise our local income tax just one day after the election is over. Doesn't that seem just a little too coincidental for you? Jamie? So I'm here to call upon you to please do the right thing, <coughs> not the easy thing. 30 seconds, Mr. Nader. The right thing, and the right thing is to recognize that this need for more budget money is absolutely a municipality issue and certainly not an income tax issue. Tony, so treat us all alike and place the burden on all of the residents in our municipality and not just a subset of it because that's just plain discrimination. Dane, please reconsider and adequately raise the municipal tax to raise the money we need and not the earned income tax, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, that brings us to Mr. Matthew Wollerman. Please say your name again. I'm sorry I don't say it right. I'm used to it, no worries, council member. Hi, my name is uh, Matthew Ackman. Uh, I reside at 4211 Bulltown Road. And uh, ladies and gentlemen of the council, Mr. Mayor, uh, you've heard me speak plenty of times up here warning many different overreaches uh, from the federal government, uh, including COVID, and how I think it's important for the city of Murraysville to protect ourselves from these overreaches, such as mask mandates and vaccine mandates. Uh, I'm here before you because this week, uh, even though I do work in uh, 
Monroeville, these things can still happen here in Murraysville, where um, I've been informed that if you do not get vaccinated, you will lose your job. So um, I'm right now, because of uh, my healthy skepticism of uh, what I put into my body, uh, because of my critical thinking, uh, I have uh, made personal choices, and now me and dozens of others of my coworkers are uh, facing this decision. And um, again, there's nothing uh, the council can do here for my position, but we can protect those residents and employees of Murraysville. So I implore you again that uh, with the powers that you have to make sure that nobody, no resident of Murraysville or an employee of Murraysville has to go through this. Uh, do what you can to ban these vaccine mandates. Um, and then on top of that, uh, of other warnings I've, I've speak of, September 29th, the uh, National School Board Association uh, sent a letter to the president uh, discussing how uh, they don't like the way the city council, uh, not city council, the, the school board meetings have been going uh, across the country. Uh, they didn't just say that they were rowdy. They didn't just say they were mean. They used specific verbiage. They used uh, terms like hate crimes and domestic terrorists. The very same verbiage uh, that is used in the national strategy for countering domestic terrorism, the very document that was the first time I came up and spoke to you and how I warned that it was a declaration war on citizens. Now we have the FBI, who's by, uh, released by uh, Merrick Garland, that there's an open line for anybody on school boards to uh, uh, investigate anybody who gets a call um, by the school board. I don't know if any one of our school board members here, uh, Franklin Regional, would do such a thing, but the fact that that capability is ready and available is quite frankly terrifying. And so um, what I ask of that, um, in conjunction with you know the warnings I gave before about people who could lose their jobs because of the vaccine, um, consider what we can do to keep citizens of Murraysville safe from overreaching uh, uh, federal agencies. Um, because I know for myself, if I were to get a knock on the door from the FBI, I'm calling 911 and I'm asking the local police to uh, take care of these uh, interlopers. Uh, that is all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay, for the good of the order, is there anyone else here tonight who would like to give public comment? Okay, seeing none, we will move on. That brings us to liaison comments and committee reports. Uh, let's start down here with uh, Tony. Uh, medic one meets tomorrow night. Okay, Carl. Uh, the planning committee met uh, on uh, October 12th uh, of discussion was Maple Commons. And for the knowledge of all of us, what Maple Commons is, is the facility along uh, Route 22 uh, next to uh, Hosses, where you now have Great Clips, Jimmy John's, The Kitchen, European Wax. And they're gonna be adding in the old Verizon space uh, a fast, I'm not sure of the name, but it's a quote, uh, healthy fast food uh, outlet. And they're indicating like the lunches would be uh, $8. What they were looking for was the okay for uh, the current uh, spaces, if you will, parking spaces. Ordinance <coughs> requires 107 spaces. Currently, there are 72 uh, spaces, plus they lease 12 from the Nicholas Supply for 84. They did have a traffic study done by a uh, authorized entity, and they in identified that at noontime, there were 44 e empty spaces, and at dinner, there were 45 empty spaces. So uh, essentially, it, it could be made, they were asking that there's 28 uh, open spaces available in those critical times, 23 would be required to make the ordinance. They're asking for the okay on that. Uh, they also indicated that the outdoor, there was an outdoor seating request by Jimmy Johns. Uh, there was a, an issue with landscaping, and that was going to be uh, taken back to staff for reevaluation. Uh, the second issue was the sports zone behind uh, the uh, sheets operation. What they're going to be uh, looking to do is to put an 8 foot by 40 foot container. And just as you can think of it, the typical large container, they're going to have nine roll up doors and they're going to have rental spaces to rent bikes there. And uh, 
Applicant comes back, revise, future, okay. Uh, there will be, and there can be, additional parking to the uh, eastern side of that facility. And it, uh, they are going to provide a picture for that. And uh, they will be coming back to us with that. But it looks like a very good idea. That was it. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Jamie? Uh, pension was not met again, but to recap on what I reported at our last meeting, which was at the last investment policy statement for our combined pension plan, uh, our plan for the police and non-uniform employees, was last completed in 2017. Morrison Fiduciary Advisors uh, have submitted a statement for our consideration tonight that summarizes the changes that the Pension Committee, with guidance from our investment advisor, have made and includes some basic wording upgrades. Um, and that item is on our agenda for consideration of <coughs> action items as 13C this evening. Wonderful. Thank you. Dominic? Uh, library board meets tomorrow, but I did want to alert you to a couple of uh, upcoming programs. The children's programs, in particular, October 19th from 4 to 5 p.m., it's called Friendship Friday. And October is National Bullying Prevention Month, and what better place to learn about being kind and making friends than the library? Enjoy a read aloud of Spookly, the square pumpkin, the pumpkin who just couldn't fit in, and other activities like making a kindness catcher and creating a be a friend treat blend. Registration is required for this event. There's also October 25th from 6 to 7 p.m., Spooky Science, this frightening fun program for children ages 6 to 12 years old, will feature Halloween-themed stories, followed up by science experiment demonstrations, as well as giving kids a chance to practice some hands-on STEM skills. Registration is required for this event also. Uh, Monday, November 11th, from 11, or all Mondays, uh, 11.30 a.m., Mother Goose on the Loose, is a fun-filled 30-minute interactive series for babies and toddlers aged 0 to 3 years old and their caregivers. Um, this registration is also required for this event. Teen program, uh, this is sort of new, November 15th at 6 p.m. There's a teen advisory board meeting. And the board meeting is a group of people ages 12 to 18 who help the library run teen-centered programs recommend young adult books and, and or movies for the library to buy, promote the library to their friends, and generally help the library better serve teens. Um, in adult programming, October 20th, 1 to 3 p.m., there is a plant-based nutrition meeting. Plant-based Pittsburgh will host a meeting from 1 to 3 p.m. Apples, pumpkin, squash will be highlighted during the discussion. And the mayor did uh, mention that on October 20th at 2 to 3 p.m., Gemma Stemley is to speak, uh, an author, a local Pittsburgh author. Um, so all are welcome, and registration is also required for this event. For the events that require the registration, please register online through the library's website, murraysvillelibrary.org, or by <coughs> calling the library at 724 327 1102. Lastly, just save the date for Jingles and Gingerbread on December 6. More details to follow. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Matt? Uh, yeah. The Parks and Recreation Committee uh, met October 12th. Um, some of the things discussed were the routine maintenance ongoing, the basketball hoop, the plexiglass was replaced at Heritage. Uh, there's been ongoing maintenance at Bear Hollow, the tennis courts, Repair to the playground. Um, a donation box has been installed at MCP near the splash pad and playground. Um, there is a double locking system on that to raise money for the parks. Um, there's also been continuing work on the clubhouse, as everyone has seen. Um, the farmer's market closed September 30th. It was very successful this year. Um, even through some of the weather issues they had, they really had a great turnout and, uh, for it. Uh, the average weekly vendors were about 26 this year. Uh, the goal for next year is to be at 40 vendors at the, for that. So um, anyone interested in being a vendor, please contact uh, Carly in the Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, senior Halloween party is Friday the 29th. Uh, it'll be at noon at the Senior Center. 
Uh, we are in need of some volunteers. Anyone that's able to participate in that and help out would be greatly appreciated. Uh, trick or treat on the trail is Saturday the 30th. That is from two to four and you do have to be registered for that. So please visit the website, uh, the municipality website and get signed up or you can call and uh, they'll guide you through how to do that. That also, volunteers are also needed for that. So anyone able to volunteer that really is successful with the children uh, on the trail. Um, ben Sampson attended the export dedication of the new trail info building. Uh, that's next to the newly dedicated Veterans Memorial there in Export. Uh, really nice. I'm sure everyone's seen it go up. It's, uh, you know, something that they did in Export, but it does really tie into our trail system here in Murraysville. So uh, very excited and thankful that they, they've done that and doing a lot of things along that trail. Um, the drawings have been finalized for the cornhole uh, boards that are going to go in at Townsend Park. Uh, so those are going to be built and then they'll be installed as soon as they're delivered. Uh, so we're excited for that, thanks to the, uh, the Parks Foundation. Uh, Scout Project Update, um, they are doing the sign. Dave met with uh, the gentleman that's doing the signage at Townsend for all the trails. He already has some of them up. It's just a slow moving. It takes a while to name those all, but they are doing those. Uh, and the, gentleman, the scout that's doing the Gaga uh, pits, the Gaga ball pits, uh, the drawings have been submitted for that, so they're under review right now. Um, the Veterans Memorial has been completely refurbished, originally erected in 1989 by the Murraysville Kiwanis Club, which is no longer active, and it will now be maintained by the American Legion. Uh, rededication ceremony is Saturday uh, the 30th. The time is still yet to be announced on that, so it will be on our website, though, if you uh, need to look at the time for that. And I think that's it. Next meeting is November 9th. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. Yep. As far as FTMSA goes, I'll just again note that increased bond rating. Um, when you think of how far those guys have come, it's really amazing. So all the kudos in the world to them. And can I have a quick minute? Sure. Um, Jamie pointed out, I mentioned a children's program, which I think is a really important one, which is Friendship Friday um, for the bullying. It says October 19th from 4 to 5. That's not a Friday, and that's that was yesterday. So <laughs> we're looking at the calendar. We think it must be the 29th. But I would, if you're interested, please go to the website or call them and verify when that is. I apologize for that. No. Thank you. All right, everyone. That brings us to our workshop items. And we will start with 9A, a discussion concerning amendments to Ordinance 101920, the fee ordinance. Jim? Yes, yeah, so the staff is recommending uh, basically three minor changes to the uh, fee ordinance. One would be to uh, uh, increase uh, the uh, deposit fee for the pavilions and uh, the um, gazebo uh, to $200. Uh, it's currently $200 at the community center. Uh, we've had some issues with the rental of the uh, park facilities. Uh, people are leaving them a mess uh, and uh, increased time for public works to clean up after them. So that would be one. The second is to discontinue the rental of the uh, senior area uh, as a meeting room. Uh, since uh, the clubhouse should be completed here very sh near in the very near future, move it out there and uh, the, charge the uh, rental fee there uh, of $25 uh, an hour on weekends, $15 an hour during the weekdays. And then finally, uh, uh, it's proposed to uh, uh, eliminate the final four steps of the permit fee for the commercial and our groups other than our building and replace it with one fee for any construction over 20,000 square feet with a single fee of 0.035 cents per square foot. Okay. Now with some well thought out analysis in our staff briefing, are there questions or concerns from council? Not concerns. I do have a question. Do we have an idea what uh, neighboring communities charge on the per square foot basis? Like, uh, yeah, that brings or? it in line with the neighboring communities, the 0.035. Okay, so it is like 0.035, okay. Yeah, I can say our fees have been generally pretty low. And again, if renters aren't maintaining things, especially with a security deposit, that would just seem like common sense. Any other questions or concerns for anyone? Okay, well then I think we have an agreement. Uh, we like the staff briefing. Thank you, Jim. 
That brings us to 11A, which is a discussion concerning proposed ordinance 1050-21, an ordinance that provides for the demolition of dangerous structures in the municipality of Murraysville. Um, as you know, uh, we have uh, uh, really taken um, on uh, in the Community Development Department uh, uh, canvassing neighborhoods in the community uh, for property maintenance issues. Uh, uh, we work from the belief that uh, one house starts to go bad, the whole neighborhood goes bad. Um, we're going to be targeting uh, two specific areas of the community here going forward. Um, and some preliminary analysis have identified some structures in these uh, neighborhoods that really need to be addressed. Um, the original uh, demolition ordinance for blighted structure in Marysville was passed in 1967. And then uh, when we implemented the property maintenance code, there was some provisions in there, but not a whole lot of teeth. Uh, so what's being proposed under this ordinance um, is very similar to some of the neighboring communities uh, that they used to lay it's out a specific uh, process and responsibilities of the uh, building inspector of council and the solicitor and notifications of property owners uh, of blighted structures. So. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer about uh, that. My question would be, I mean, do we tend to get a lot of complaints about these blighted properties from neighbors and things? I'll tell you what we're finding is um, that a number of these structures are rentals. And uh, they were once family homes uh, that people have either moved out of or passed away. And the estate has decided to rent them out. And we do have a rental ordinance here which requires a change of tenant uh, to be reported to the municipality so we can do life and safety inspections. But what we don't have any way of controlling is knowing if the property turns to a rental. Um, so, um, yes, we do have several areas in the community where there are a number of structures that could be considered to be blighted and eligible for the demolition program. Okay, absolutely, because I'll note in the communities I represent around here, demolition hearings are a regular occurrence. Mm -hmm. So, Well, a lot of times what we find is that once the, the structure has been uh, determined to be blighted, um, either the property owner or an individual will buy that property, demolish the property, and put a new house on it. That's happened uh, on several occasions in the Ringertown area of the community. So um, sometimes just a threat. Uh, we'll get it moving along. I have to say that's probably the most amazing result you can have. Right. It saves thousands of dollars and somebody builds a new house instead of just a vacant lot. But okay, uh, questions or concerns from council? Uh, we'll bring this back uh, next meeting uh, to authorize advertising. Okay, wonderful. Okay, 11B is going to be removed. That brings us to a discussion regarding the Murraysville Community Park Amphitheater design plans prepared by KU Resources. Uh, we wanted to update you. We've got some preliminary design uh, done on the uh, facility and are beginning to work on estimated costs and uh, essentially sharing the responsibilities between public works and what would need to be contracted out. Uh, so up here on the screen, uh, you'll see uh, the preliminary site plan. Uh, to give you some orientation, let's see here where we're at. Um, this is uh, Farm Road and then Weistertown Road. Boy, my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. There's the intersection of Farm and Weistertown. This would be the access road into the facility. Um, the white building there would be demolished. We have uh, uh, saved the uh, roofing, the metal roofing and the gables. Uh, they'll be used to build a pavilion in the park. Um, so most of that will be salvaged. Uh, there'll be a, uh, a four bay there that will serve as a sedimentation pond during construction and then as a uh, detention pond once um, construction is completed. So it's proposed to bring a road in up around to the top here, parking area here, I believe 80 cars. 
additional parking over uh, where the uh, unpaved lot next to the Miracle Field will provide additional parking. This will be a uh, culvert across the stream, which has already been installed for access over to uh, what uh, is known there as the Miracle Field Loop, where the uh, detention facility is there. Um, this is the parking, this will be a parking area for handicap. This uh, area here is proposed to be an area for food trucks uh, to park on a hard surface. The restroom would be identified in this area. Uh, the uh, utility building would be here, which will house uh, the uh, electric and uh, provide for storage uh, for, the or for the amphitheater. And then this area here would be a green lawn area. It's envisioned to uh, be used, uh, you know, art shows, walking mm -hmm. uh, type activities in that area. And then the, the amphitheater would be built here. Uh, with concrete apron around it to provide handicapped access and also a uh, seating area for small uh, events that would occur there. And then this would be terraced up uh, in three different steps uh, and uh, have the possibility to hold between three and 5,000 people for major events. We don't anticipate that happening regularly, but uh, uh, certainly the area down here that would be uh, paved and uh, the first tier is what we anticipate getting used a lot. Uh, as part of the second phase, probably, there's a flat area above the tiered section that would have pavilions uh, that would look directly down on the amphitheater area. Now, the amphitheater will be uh, oriented to the northeast uh, to avoid sun and other weather conditions there. and. Uh, it's proposed at this point to put the detention facility over next to the uh, riparian buffer area. Uh, we're still working on some alternatives for that. Um, we are uh, anticipating cost increase. Uh, Public Works is uh, taking the responsibility at this point to put the uh, water line in, probably the sewer line and the road. Um, we're having trouble with uh, lead times and supply chain uh, issues. Uh, that's where I, the clubhouse isn't open yet. We can't get pipe for the water line to the clubhouse. Uh, so, and then this area, the major excavation area would be contracted. The construction of the pavilion would be, or of the amphitheater would be contracted. And uh, certainly the concrete and uh, uh, pervious uh, paving in this area would be contracted. To anticipate the amphitheater will be purchased through a state co-op program and uh, the construction of the amphitheater would also be bid out. So within the next couple of weeks we should have a firm cost on uh, the development of the facility and the distribution of responsibilities between contracting out and uh, what will be completed by Public Works. Okay, awesome. Questions or concerns from council? Ideas? Yeah. Outside of supply chain issues, what are they thinking for time frame of completion? Well, we we would hope that we could have this bid and work, uh, the dirt work start uh, by early spring. Uh, Public Works will, uh, they've already begun the work. They've uh, begun clearing trees for the road. Uh, we're waiting on uh, manholes. Uh, for the sanitary and waiting on the, the water line, same as the clubhouse. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm. Brings us to our action items. Let's begin with 13A. Can I have a motion, please? To make a motion to advertise ordinance number 1049-21, an amendment to the fee ordinance. Second. Thank you, Jamie and Tony. Jim? Uh, we've uh, outlined uh, the proposed changes there. Uh, this is the process we have to go through to advertise. It would be, if advertised, uh, it would be placed on uh, next meeting for action. Okay. Any questions or concerns? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That brings us to 13B. Can I have a motion, please? I'd like to consider approval of resolution number 738-21, a resolution to dispose of certain municipality records 
in accordance with the state records retention policy. Second the motion. Thank you, Tony and Carl. Diane? This is my normal once a month uh, resolution. We are almost finished with this, though. We brought about 200 boxes from um, the caves about three years ago now. And between uh, Carol and some part-time people that we've had off and on and staff, we have almost everything scanned and disposed of. Um, Carol's working on some of the uh, current files of planning that are in the file cabinets, not the boxes, but she's did an ama amazing job for us. So it's almost finished. Absolutely. Thank you. That, that has to be hard work. So questions or concerns from council? Just a quick question. Is any of that digitized? It's all scanned. It is, yes, okay. That's what she's been doing. A lot of it's duplicates. We found out as we went on. Um, the duplicates were eliminated, and she scanned anything that needed to be kept for historical purposes, and then uh, it's being disposed of. Okay. okay. Any other questions or concerns? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion passes. That brings us to 13C. Can I have a motion, please? I'd like to consider our approval of resolution number 739-21, a resolution revising the existing investment policy statement, resolution number 667-17, for the municipal pension plans. Second them. Tony and Tony. Tony and Tony. Um, periodically, we go uh, through the investment policy, the pension committee, and our advisor, um, Frank Burnett from Morrison Fiduciary. Um, he recommended that we update this. The last time was 2017. And it, it's kind of housekeeping. Um, we updated the investment manager within the file. We updated um, the value of the plan assets. Um, initially, there were commissions for brokers. We no longer have that. Um, we do not invest in single companies, so that was removed. Um, we no longer have any energy investments. Um, that was removed, and it was replaced with real estate. And um, we update our investment targets um, periodically. And this change gives him the ability to make minor tweaks in the investment policy as he sees necessary with the market. Okay. Well, it's certainly done a good job thus far. Any questions or concerns about the amendments? Just a question. The advisor said to basically get out of energy stocks. Is that? Okay. And uh, interesting. Okay. Any other questions or concerns? <coughs> okay. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion passes. Can I have a motion? For 13D. We make a motion to consider a request by the Murraysville Business and Professional Association for a waiver of rental fees at the community center. Second. Thank you, Mac and Tony. Jim, Diane? Yes, the uh, Murraysville Business and Professional Association has really been an offshoot of the Murraysville Economic Community Development Corporation. It's been around for a number of years. Uh, they currently have uh, 19 local businesses here that had met on the uh, first Thursday of every month uh, at Dick's Diner. However, due to staffing issues, uh, uh, they're not able to access the uh, diner at this time and are in need of a, uh, a place to meet. And they approached Ms. Pouty about using the community center. Since it's a uh, municipal policy that we don't waive fees, uh, uh, we negotiated with the Business Association, which is going to be supported by the Westmoreland Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Dick DeBone, I don't know if you know or not, the Murraysville resident is the new executive director of uh, the Westmoreland Chamber of Commerce. Um, they have offered, in exchange for the use of the building, the ability for the municipality to use their uh, social media outlet and uh, their website to advertise Murraysville happenings, uh, which would be a good thing for a lot of our recreation programs, things like that. And that's typically $100 uh, uh, to do something like that. So that more, would more than cover the uh, cost uh, of the rental of the facility. So uh, we were recommending the council consider waiving the fees. Only sounds like a more than fair trade. Questions or concerns? 
Just as a question, it's not like we're actually uh, losing money, right? Meaning, if if they weren't there, it's not like there's people waiting in line to get there. No, it's just a lost opportunity. Lost opportunity, potential loss. Yeah. That's correct. Or we're getting it on the back end with the free advertising. <coughs> no, it's a plus. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think the gain of the social media presence would be. Yeah. Ways outweighs it. Okay. Awesome. Questions or concerns from anyone? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion passes. That brings us to 13E. Can I have a motion, please? I'd like to make a motion to, to consider authorization to advertise for a public hearing to present proposed amendments to the 2021 operating budget to be held on November 3rd, 2021 at 7 p.m. Second. Thank you, Tony and Mac. Jim? Uh, this is uh, housekeeping. Normally, each year around September, um, I try to look through the budget, all the departments, to see if there were um, estimates that we missed, uh, revenue higher, lower than what we anticipated, or expenses that occurred that we didn't anticipate. This will just sort of correct that so that there aren't a lot of large variances at the end of the year. OK. And again, this is just the advertisement. So are there any questions or concerns at this time for the advertisement? I'm not concerned. I'd like to, to comment uh, the staff because they identified for every particular island, line item the rationale on a separate. So that was very good. Absolutely. OK, any other questions or concerns? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That brings us to 13F. Can I have a motion, please? We have a motion to consider authorization to advertise for a public hearing for the 2022 operating budget. Second. Thank you, Mac and Tony. Diane? This is just normal housekeeping, too. You will receive your budget um, around the 1st of November, probably the end of October. And um, I'd like to have a public hearing the 1st of November. Um, get audience input and council comments in case things need to be revised before we get too late into the process. Okay. <coughs> and again, this is just the advertisement. So do we have any questions or concerns at this time? Well, the public hearing, that's on what day then, Diane? It'll be the first Wednesday in November. It will be. Okay. 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 Hearing no other questions, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. That brings us to community development. Can I have a motion for 14A, please? 14A. Make a motion to approve SP-4-21 Kistler Place, a mixed-use building and associated parking area with first floor retail and eight second floor <coughs> apartments, tax parcel 49-15-10-0-027, business zoning. Second. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jamie and Tony. Jim? Yes, uh, we have representatives here from uh, Kistler Place uh, to follow up. Uh, two things uh, from the last meeting. We had asked uh, uh, the developer, the owner, to uh, consider putting a, a peaked roof on the, uh, uh, the garage mm -hmm. slash storage slash whatever. Uh, and he provided uh, a drawing. Uh, it's in your meeting documents file. Uh, or I'm sorry, a support documents file, but I've drug it over here. There it is. It's up on the screen. So they are proposing a uh, three-sided building with a peaked roof. The other item uh, was a review of access to the site and uh, turning templates uh, for the ladder truck to be able to access the building. And uh, they were provided and reviewed by the fire chief of White Valley and the fire chief of Murraysville, and they found those to be acceptable. So with that, um, I'll turn it over to the representatives. Good evening. Chris Ham with KDH Consulting Engineers. Um, the only other... Site-wise, it changed uh, from the last time you saw it was actually the location of the drive entrance. Based upon our traffic study, we actually s 
There was three parking stalls in the back. We actually kind of flopped the location of the three parking stalls and moved the driveway a little farther down the hill uh, from Kistler. Or, I'm sorry, from the entrance. I think it was 160 feet to 242 feet, something like that. Yeah, the, the original drive entrance was basically located. There we go. In this area, we basically just took these three parking stalls from here, moved them there, and moved the driveway down. And that this was actually the plan that was reflected with the turning templates that were around. Okay. Okay. And we had a pretty robust discussion about this a um, couple of weeks ago. Are there any outstanding questions or concerns from council? Yeah, I have a, a lot of small question. On the on the retail, it's going to be downstairs. Yes. Are there any restrictions on what type of business can go in there? It would have to meet the code on what would be allowed to go in there. I know what we're envisioning is more of a professional retail, not a, not a high turnover retail, um, something along those lines, because it's just not in a location that would have a high turnover retail. Under the mixed use uh, provisions in the uh, zoning ordinance, there are specific uses identified. But at this time, we do not have any tenants. No tenants yet? Okay. I just think you don't want a pizza shop down there <coughs> or a vape shop or something like that. No, like I said it. I won't rule no, I mean, anything yeah. out, but. <laughs> it, just, yeah, it would be a tenant that fits the use of mixed use, you know. Yeah, that, I mean, uh, we don't know what the market will bear in terms of the tenant. So. Mm -hmm. And obviously the applicants recognize it, and it has to be in conformity with our ordinances, otherwise yeah. they'd have to get a variance. Which could be what? a pizza shop or a vape shop. And <laughs> <laughs> up. What, what was, uh, I remember we discussed the, the lighting in the garages. Do we determine, like, is there, is there lighting all the time in those? Or I, remember, I just remember something with that discussion that we were that last, uh, looking at it. The last document you had of the garages, we did add some motion lights um, in the center of each bay. I don't know if we can get it back. So as a car pulls in, the light would come on, then it would go off afterwards. But then there's there's lighting in the parking lot as well. Yeah, there are wall packs that will right. yeah. eliminate the parking lot itself. Right. Okay. okay. When you moved the when you moved that driveway down, that was what was reviewed by the fire department. Yes. Correct? Yes. Um, they, the only comment they had was actually this radius, which after we were in the turning templates, we actually flared that out a little bit more. Okay. Um, to accommodate the, the ladder truck. As long as the chiefs are mm -hmm. good with it, that's good. Okay. Now, Jim, I don't see any conditions that we have to attach. I would uh, refer the conditions to the highlighted uh, items in the uh, briefing. There are several conditions uh, concerning uh, permits uh, and... Um, conditions right here. Bring it up. Uh, all right. Now, are you aware of the conditions staff has proposed? Yes. Okay, do you accept those conditions? Yes. Okay. I would note yeah. that the motion did include, it must include all conditions, so you're acceptable with that? Yes. All right. Any questions or concerns before we approve this? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to 14B. Can I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to consider approval of SP-7-21, a site plan for the Bowser Body Shop, 4429 William Penn Highway, tax parcel 49-14-07-0-002. Second. <laughs> With the conditions outlined in the briefing. With the conditions outlined in the briefing. Let's go Mac and uh, Jamie Lee. Okay, you want to give us the intro, Jim? Sure. Um, we've uh, had representatives here from Bowser the last two meetings. Uh, this is essentially uh, a similar use moving into the creative bus building that was approved some time ago. Uh, there was uh, some major landscaping that had to be, uh, replacement that had to be done down there. In addition, uh, they're proposing uh, an enclosed area 
with a six foot fence and a four foot uh, planning mount uh, to store the vehicles. Uh, the recommended conditions are that this, uh, the uh, uh, any vehicles uh, waiting to be repaired be stored within the storage area. Replacement of all the landscaping is identified on the plan and uh, that the uh, two parking spaces uh, be moved into the gravel area and they've met all of those on their site plan. And the final condition being uh, the D, uh, proof of DEP permit on the pink boost. Okay. Um, I think we have a representative from the applicant here. Would you please come up, sir? And please just state your name. And Hi, my name's Ed McGrath. I'm Director of Operations with Bowser. Okay. Um, are you aware of the conditions that Mr. Morrison's talked about? Yes. Do you have any issues with them conditions? Nope, not a one. Okay. Any questions or concerns from council? Nope. nope. It's nice to see something happening yeah. there and yeah. the upgrades that need to be done. Thank you. Sure. Yep. Okay. Hearing no uh, questions or concerns, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks. That brings us to 14C. Can I have a motion, please? I'd like to make a motion to consider reapproval of the Bangura subdivision S 3 21, a minor subdivision tax parcel 49 0800 0 006, Hilti Road, RR Zoning. Second. Thank you, Tony and Jamie. Jim? Uh, this is a reapproval of the Van Dura subdivision. Uh, the condition of approval was that the uh, plans couldn't be released for recording until a DEP permit was secured for the uh, septic system. They have since uh, provided that evidence, and uh, the 90 days for recording had lapsed, so it needs to be reapproved. Okay. Any questions or concerns on this? This is more clerical. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion passes. <coughs> that brings us to 15A. Can I have a motion, please? Motion to consider reducing the sequestered funds being held to ensure completion of the required improvements at the Hillstone Village development in the amount of $254,601. Second. Thank you, Carl and Tony. Jim? Uh, this is uh, just a release of the bond, the uh, work, or partial release of the bond. Uh, they have uh, proof rolled the roads. I suspect they'll be paving here shortly. Um, and uh, it has been inspected and recommended for release. Okay. Questions or concerns? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion passes. Can I have a motion for 15B? Make a motion to consider the release of a bond for the Kish development, 4373 Old William Penn Highway, in the amount of $77,000. Second. <laughs> so, yeah, let's go Mac and Tony on that one. June? Um, this is uh, the uh, work that was done on Old William Penn Highway. It's been inspected and approved. Um, I'd like to congratulate both uh, uh, Kishes and uh, the people who moved into the former bakery down there, they did very nice jobs with those buildings down there. In really did. And uh, we'd like to see that kind of development here in Murraysville. Absolutely. Okay. Questions or concerns on this one? They're really nice. Yep, absolutely. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We have nothing under public works and parks. Any uh, old business from anyone? Uh, we are, uh, we replaced the, uh, uh, the piece of, um, the gentleman who raised at the last meeting down on the bridge entering yeah. the right. pen. That's been replaced. Awesome. <laughs> and, uh, we have the police monitoring the, uh, traffic, uh, at both Crowfoot and out front here for the school district drop off. Uh, we've been following that for the last two weeks. We'd like to give it a month, uh, yeah. and then we'll come back with, uh, to council with some what we find. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, pretty neat too. The uh, the stampings by fairies. Yeah, that's pretty. It's pretty cool what they do. Yeah. Like the yeah the crosswalks. They're 
they've been doing it the last few days. That's pretty yeah, cool. they're done at the intersection now. Now they have to do the um, crosswalk at the church and down at the... Uh, it's just crazy how they do it. It's pretty neat. Uh, I stopped and watched for a little bit. Was, yeah, yeah they, heat, they actually heat the asphalt yeah. with the pattern, lay the pattern in and melt that. And mm -hmm. it was, Yeah, it was pretty, I pulled off and <laughs> watched for a few minutes. It was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. Uh, one other uh, piece of old business, and, and Jim, I, as I recall, did we not for Sardis Road, I think there was going to be a traffic study after it was completed, uh, done by the school district. That was one of the conditions. Is that something that they're... One year. Pardon? One, one year after opening. So it'll be, meaning they're obligated to do it by end, what, next August or September? Right, if required, yes. Okay. Uh, if required. Uh, that was part, if you remember, the um, school zone. That was the traffic study to determine whether the school zone was be required there or not. Okay. Okay. And then it also, I believe, it had to do with a, uh, a, a four-way stop at uh, Crowfoot. And um, what's the name of the street? Crowfoot and... Uh Entrance to Murray Woods. <laughs> North, North, uh, okay, North yeah, yeah. Islands or? Yeah. Nah. North Lawn. North Lawn, thank you. North, yeah. Okay. We all know where it is. <laughs> okay. Any other uh, old business? Okay. New business from anyone? Okay. No executive session, no action items. One more motion. To adjourn. Adjourn. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. We're adjourned. Halloween.